Having these offers felt so good, I can't lie. Coming from a nobody to a player with decisions coming signing day was an amazing feeling. Unfortunately, that feeling started to diminish once I started speaking to the coaches. Majority of my five and four star teams wanted me to switch positions. The most they were willing to negotiate was fullback, and it wasn't going to be the first string player either. They said they might get me in on third down or close to the goal line, but the only way to get the full football experience, as they would say, would be to move away from running back into another role. I wasn't going for it. I really wanted to be a running back at the top school, and I can't lie, I was super stubborn, which led me into a huge depression stint. And bad news for me was, when I was sad, I was eating to make myself feel better. And of course, with all that emotional eating, my weight was getting crazy. I mean, I put on so much weight, I, I, I was tripping when I seen the scale say 325. And this is why I always mission him, but huge shout out to my dad. He really wasn't for the self-pity party that I was going through, and he helped me realize that even though I wasn't getting the opportunity to play running back, I was still getting an opportunity that my mom and him never had. He was disappointed and felt like I was being a spoiled brat. I had to take some time and think about it, and he was right. Although I couldn't go to a top school like I expected, there were still some options for me on the table. And that's how my journey officially started. On signing day, I decided to go with Arkansas State, where they were offering me a chance to stay at my position, but I would have to come in and prove to the coach that not only could I hold the position down, but that my weight wouldn't be a problem. When the news broke that I had committed to Arkansas State, I thought the town would be happy for me. And boy, was I wrong. Welcome back to Redwood Football Radio, and we have Clarence on the line to talk about our team recruiting Jeremy Whitney, a five-star running back from California, standing six foot one with an earth-shattering, staggering weight of 297 pounds. Clarence, go ahead. I'm sure I'm about to say what all the Red Wolves fans are thinking, but... Put that fat motherfucker on the line where he belongs. Okay, Clarence, calm down. Now this is a family radio. I don't now. care. You don't give a. F At that moment, I knew I was walking into fire, and I had a lot to prove. So I packed my bags to move across the country and I had to watch my mama cry as I went into the airport for Arkansas. Our first practice and I was literally and figuratively the big man on campus and I had a lot to prove immediately. As I said before, coach had me a second string and didn't trust me behind a quarterback just yet. But during practice, I really felt like I was still in high school. I hear a lot of people say that going from high school to college is a big change and I wasn't feeling any of that out there with this team. Now, that could be a good thing and a bad thing. You know, it could be a good thing because that meant I was getting back in my bag and no one could stop me. It could be super bad because that would mean this team was super trash and they were all out of my league. I was hoping that it was just me being the great player that I am. But anyway, fast forward to the first game of the season and I really felt like I was in high school. Coach had me on kickoff and punt returns. Anything outside of that, I was on the sideline watching everyone else do their thing and be happy on the field. Not saying that I was ungrateful as any other player, I just wanted to be on the field as much as possible. And even without me being on the field, we managed to win the game 21 to 16. But the kicker was, this was an against an FCS team who I thought we should have slaughtered. The next practice, to my surprise, the coach was giving me the opportunity to compete for the first string position. After that first game and him going back to watch some of my high school games, he thought he could work me into the game plan, switching me in and out with the current starter. He believed that we should have beat the FCS school by much more and he wasn't happy with the gameplay from the current starters. Now the entire practice, I thought I was doing well. I thought the performance I had that day was for sure showing the coach something that he wanted to see. I wasn't going down easy, I was running hard, but by the end of the practice, he was still looking a little unsure about putting me in as a starter. I had to respect it, and deep down, all I could do was hope that the team would be trash in our next game so I could get another shot. But I wouldn't have to wait too long for Coach to get fed up with our current players when I was finally put into the game during the second quarter against number nine, Auburn. Starting with the screenplay and instead of me going out there and making Coach proud, <laughs> I stumbled behind the line, not even getting a chance to touch the ball. Luckily, Coach didn't take me out straight away and gave me another chance. And when you know it, I lost two yards on a run. I was feeling super defeated at this point, and I started to wonder if everyone was right about me being a running back. Clarence, the guy from the radio, his voice was engraved in the back of my head, and that's all I could hear. 
Going against a top 10 school so early in the season, I felt like this was the perfect time and opportunity to prove Clarence and all the other non-believers wrong, but I just kept letting myself down. Luckily, my teammates were locked in, and we got all the way down to the two-yard line when coach called the option play, and of course, Auburn blew that play up, and I lost another two yards. I was quickly pulled off the field. At this moment, it was either sink or swim. Coach sent me in on a five-yard drop, but I turned up field instead and caught an eight-yard pass on first and 15, which will be my first positive stat the entire game well the celebration in my mind quickly ended after that when coach called for a screenplay and apparently there was some confusion between the QB and I because he threw a pick instead of dumping it down to me. With it only being a three-point game so late in the game, the pressure was looking too heavy for us to handle. My next play, I decided to put all the energy I had into the play when I hit a spin and caught my footing to hopefully give the team a little surge of energy. And we're running the dreadful screenplay again. Luckily, I make a huge catch to give us some positive yards. Starting to find my groove, I went out for a six yard catch, but coach pulled me out of the game after that. In the red zone, and this was my moment, or at least I wanted it to be. Back in high school, this was the area where everyone in the world knew I was going to get the score. But unfortunately, I get stopped with only three yards gain. And that was the last time I saw the field that game and we ended up taking the L against Auburn, only losing by one point. I finished with an amazing seven yards on the ground and 23 yards in the air. I mean, that was the last straw for me. My mama and daddy didn't raise me to be a loser, so that next practice, I was going to impress the hell out of my coaches to make sure I locked up the starting position. I deserved to be out there. There was no running back on that campus that was better than me. And with that motivation, I found my way to the number one spot on the depth chart. My first game as a starter really turned up on fourth and two. Coach was trusting me to get the first down, and I gave him a little more with a seven-yard run. My next turning point was another fourth down play where I went to the open part of the field to cash in on a 10 yard reception to give us another first down and closer to scoring. On the one yard line, I was feeling like my old self again. You know, as I walk into the end zone, scoring my first career touchdown. I couldn't do anything but drop down to my knee and thank God, cause before this, it was looking like I was gonna be a bust. Late in the first quarter, my lack of speed would truly show as the QB decided to give me the dump down, which turned into me slowly moving down the sideline for a 35 yard run. Man, I was so winded after that play. I was feeling dizzy, seeing the little floaty stuff in my eyes and a pain in my side, bro. But I had to get back out there and do some damage when coach called a pass and play on the two yard line. I had the opportunity to score my first pass and touchdown but when I got hit, I dropped the ball. This was the first time when I thought that my size was really affecting the way I play and how much I play. Not only was I feeling like crap, my coach could see it in my play. I would come out and make one big play and then get pulled out for about five minutes. Luckily for me, my coach was putting me in during great opportunities. For instance, on the nine yard line, I came in well rested and took it down the middle for my second rushing touchdown of the game. And just like that, I went from second string running back to being responsible for my team winning the game. The feeling was like it was back in high school. That high that I felt, I didn't want to come down from it. Not only that, but I was named player of the game with 68 yards on the ground and 71 in the air. Our next game will be against the number 22 ranked Memphis. I started the game with a seven yard reception that helped get the team going. On fourth and one, I went for another seven yard game and I was lit. <laughs> that feeling of being unstoppable was bad. Going with that feeling, I was put in another position and I took full advantage. From the 16-yard line, I went out and caught a 16-yard reception where I broke two tackles at once to score a touchdown. I wouldn't get it going again until the third quarter, and I started to realize that I had a huge problem with consistency in my game. Being tired all of the time from my bad conditioning wasn't going to make the most of my time on the field. I was actually spending more time off the field than on it. That's when I locked in and tried to put on a master class running the ball. My QB was going crazy too, making two clutch plays out of the pocket, getting us all the way down to the one yard line where I just knew coach was going to hand me the ball and score. But to my surprise, I was pulled out of the game for whatever reason. Back in the game, and the bulldozer mentality was in full effect as I run over the safety for a first down. We were already beating Memphis, a top 25 team, so badly that when the QB threw an absolute dot for another score, which was bad news for me, because that meant it was garbage time for a second string. But of course, we win the game, and I had one of my best games that season with 121 rushing yards, 41 in the air, and one touchdown. 
Now, this is the part of the season I like the most because I finally had some free time with our bye week coming up and checking in on my stats. They were not looking phenomenal as I thought they would. With 54 carries, I was only at 210 yards for the season. I mean, averaging only four yards per carry, I thought it would be a little higher. I had to call home because as you may remember, my mom was in tears when I left for Arkansas. So I had to make sure I spent plenty of time with her on FaceTime, letting her see the dorm, the campus, locker room, all that. Between you and I, she did didn't want me to leave California and if I was going to leave she would have preferred that it was at least the next state over and we all know how mamas are but look you only get one and I would rather have a mom that wanted me around than one trying to send me away all right but back on the field versus an undefeated Appalachian State and we were truly looking like a three and two team as my QB comes out and throws an interception on our first drive we desperately needed to make something shake and although I was having moments of greatness, I just couldn't string together a complete drive to really impact the game the way I wanted to. Until late in the third quarter, where I ran a kid over to get a first down. Then the next play, I went out for a 20-yard pass that lit the team and I on fire. But it seemed like the coach had something against me because every time we made it to the goal line, I was on the sideline watching. Was it that he didn't want me to be happy? Fourth quarter and the game was tied at 14. Coach calls the option play and things seemed like they were coming together as I go off for a 13 yard rush. Third and 11, and the QB pulls out another miracle dot as we get all the way to the three yard line to make this a one score game. For the first time in the game, coach doesn't pull me out and I knew I had to touch that end zone at least once before the game was over. Luckily for me, the line made a huge hole for me to walk into the end zone. App State comes out and scores, tying the game up yet again, and I know I need to do something to shift the momentum. With that in mind, I go down the field for a 25-yard reception to get the team back in it. Unfortunately, the drive turned into nothing, and we were headed to overtime. But Coach calls a run for me, and I go for seven yards, and Coach gives us the signal to hurry up to run a play again, and I walk into the end zone. App State scores, and we're back on the field for our turn, and Coach calls a pass play, and I take advantage of the space and score a passing touchdown. With sudden death into play, none of our plays were successful and Coach comes out with a kicker team to win the game by three. I win player of the game, of course, with 90 yards on the ground and 81 in the air. After that game, I was named the Sun Belt Conference Player of the Week. I didn't have a big head here in the news, but I guess my coach thought I did. And the next week, he would call himself punishing me for it. And that next game was against the unbelievable undefeated Louisiana team. We started the game off Letting them know they haven't played a real game yet. Although I didn't receive the kickoff, I made some crucial blocks to help get my teammate down past midfield to start our opening drive. That drive gave us three points, and I wasn't seeing the field a lot this game. Again, I'm not sure what the coach had against me, but with a 4-2 and two record, I didn't think my time on the sideline was what the team needed to win games. I mean, don't get me wrong, we were winning this game, but I wanted the ball. <laughs> I know that sounds selfish, but let's be honest. In this game, it's out of sight, out of mind, and I wanted to make sure no one forgot who I was. So when I did get the ball, I ran hard. Make sure the next time I ran the ball, the defenders got out of my way. And that's exactly what they did late in the fourth quarter when I bounced off players to cash in a 53-yard run for a touchdown. Uh, that was my statement to the coaching staff to put me in the game because I was a playmaker, not someone that you put in the game every now and then. I finished the game with 94 yards on the ground and 13 in the air. Next game, we were going against an equally bad team in South Alabama. Opening drive, I steamrolled players for a five-yard rush. I guess after last game's performance, Coach was going to trust me and let me play. <laughs> I was getting tough yards at this point because the passing game was nowhere to be found. That is until the QB hit one of our playmakers and he went off for 36 yards to get us into the red zone where I knew I had to be getting the ball and I did, but not in the form of a run. Instead, we put it back in the air to break the seal off the scoreboard. In the second quarter, Coach is calling the dreadful option play and what looked like a huge loss of yards, I ended up trucking a player who would cause it and I'll go for nine yards. I continue to help the team get big yards in the next pass play when I see a lot of open space in front of me, getting us all the way down to the one yard line where I wanted to get the ball again. But Coach called the option and instead of me scoring, the QB puts more points on the scoreboard. At this point, I'm thinking, what do I have to do to get into the end zone again? The passing game was really messing up this South Alabama team now. And when coach called a passing play on the seven yard line, I went to the weak part of the defense to capitalize, scoring my second touchdown in the air for this game. 
In the third quarter, it was looking like the run game was finally working as I scooped for a 25-yard run in midfield. But later, coach decides to put it back in the air, and instead of pouting about it, I make a tough catch and get another catch and touchdown added to my stats. We win the game, and although my rushing stats weren't high, I managed to get 79 on the ground and 76 in the air with three passing touchdowns. Now, speaking of my rushing yards not being so impressive, I would run into a wall as far as that goes. I was at a crossroads in my mind on whether the lack of yards was my fault or the offensive line's fault. I know in the public, the QBs and running backs always put the blame on themselves when it comes to situations like this, but let's keep it a bean. Sometimes it is the line's fault, and when it is, we have to keep it to ourselves to not hurt the team morale. And again, I can't really complain because we're winning. I'm getting into the end zone, but it's not at the consistency and frequency that I want it to be. Maybe I'm just too over competitive and I expect so much more of the team, but was that a bad thing? Maybe it had become too toxic that it would be a bad thing. I don't know, but I do know our 7-3 record should be 10-0. We do end up winning this game, though, that got close at the end, but I only rushed for 68 yards and had 31 receiving yards. Winning player of the game off those type of stats was wild to me. Our next game was against Western Kentucky, and I was back to not getting the time I thought I deserved, but when I did get in, the screenplay went for 37 yards after dropping a body 20 yards back. Coach couldn't deny that I was a dog, but for whatever reason, he was. I was running hard and got us all the way down to the red zone where I was taken out, standing on the sideline watching someone else run my touchdown in. At this point, I was thinking, f*** it. If this coach is going to allow me to rot on the sideline, then I might as well take my talents to a coach that was going to let me see it through. Why would you let me work so hard to get us in score position and not let one of the most unstoppable players on your team not score? And I know this sounds crazy looking back on it, but come on, bro. Does this not look crazy to you? I know I had conditioning problems early in the season, but this is the last game of the regular season. You got to let me cook a little bit. There wasn't a time this season when I wasn't the best player out there. But for whatever reason, I spent the majority of that time sideline. I, again, I know I sound crazy complaining even though we are destroying this team, but this was one of my worst performances with only 62 yards rushing and 60 in the air. Now, it was bowl season, and after a 9-3 season, we found ourselves in the RL New Orleans Bowl against a number 24-ranked UAB. The environment was like something I had been craving for a long time. I had to lock in, and I started off strong as I started the game with a 20-yard rush. Not going with that momentum, Coach decides to call a pass play on 3rd and 21, where the QB severely overthrows me and is back to the sideline. And our dumbass coach decides to keep the ball out of my hands again as the QB decides he plays for the other team and throws it right to them, stopping us from scoring again. And it gets worse because the QB comes out again and throws another pick. Luckily, I get the stop, but the defense doesn't. And now we're down 7-0 in my first bowl game. I guess the QB got tired of the coach bitching at him because our next drive, he comes out and finally completes a pass. Coach calls an option play and I don't get the ball, but we do score to tie the game up before half. Coach came back out in the third, sticking with the pass play, not letting me get into any type of groove as we try and work our way down the field. I'm thinking if you can't beat them, join them. So I'm going out here and getting some receptions as well because after all, a win is a win. And if we somehow win this game, I want to make sure I contribute it somehow. Fourth quarter, and we're down four. I get the ball. I stumble for a seven-yard game. Third and nine, I go down the field, sneaking behind the defense to make a reception for 25 yards. I don't need to mention this is a crucial drive, but it definitely is. Third and five on the 13-yard line, coach calls another pass play, and the QB doesn't make a play or passes the ball, which means we now have to go for it on fourth and 12. Now, I beat my defender by a mile, and the QB overthrows me by a mile. And that was our season. One bad throw too many, one bad play call too many. And in my opinion, not getting me the ball enough. At that moment, I had enough. I was fed up with the coach not utilizing me the best way possible. Walking off that field as a loser was the most hurtful part, especially considering I did everything I could do but the coach did it. Needless to say, this was going to be my last game wearing this uniform. 
at the end of it all, I only rushed for 678 yards, but I was a first team Sun Belt All-American. The coaching staff was all in my face letting me know that next season was going to be even better for me. Talking about bringing in new linemen, new QB, all that crap. But in the back of my mind, I knew what I was going to do before this meeting. <laughs> How do I tell them? It caught up to him in the worst way. <coughs> what was that coughing like that? <coughs> Ray, I know you're not up here coughing like that. Ma. I'm dying. Boy, hell no. Nah. You got a fever? I don't think so. I'm cold. But you're sweating, so that's a yes. I've been throwing up this morning. I'm surprised you didn't hear that. As long as y'all been making...